The United States Marine Corps is known for setting itself apart from the rest of the US military. They have the longest boot camp, the toughest physical training test, and one of the best esprit de corps you could ask for. But when it comes to special operations, things get even more interesting. The Marine Corps only has one, that's right, one special operations unit, and it hardly needs an introduction. The United States Marine Raiders, also known as MARSOC. MARSOC Marines aren't your average Marines. They've done their time in the fleet, gone through intense selection processes, and received state-of-the-art training to be at the level they're at. But with that said, what exactly sets Marine Raiders apart from the rest of the Marine Corps? What kind of missions does MARSOC do? How capable are they? And what does one have to go through to become a MARSOC Raider? We're going to answer all those questions for you, and much more. Join us as we dive into one of the most badass special operations career fields out there. This is Marine Raiders. The Marine Raiders of today are inspired by the original Marine Raiders in World War II, which were special missions forces that conducted amphibious light infantry warfare. Disbanded just two short years after they were stood up, their legacy would be revived in 2005 when the Marine Corps finally decided to take their seats at the SOCOM table and stood up MARSOC. They pulled recon marines from some of the recon battalions and stood up what were known as Marine Special Operations Battalions at the time, and the rest is history. Today. MARSOC stands as one of the most capable and effective special operations forces the military has to offer. Just like today's sponsor, Strikegum has one of the most capable and effective solutions for your pre-workout needs. What's up guys, I'm Veteran Vinny. Unlike traditional pre-workout powders or sugar-filled energy drinks, with Strike Gum, all you gotta do is pop in a piece, feel the rush, and get energized. There's nothing worse than showing up to the gym sluggish and not having your best workout. Let Strike Gum give you the boost you deserve. Each piece of Strike Gum contains 90 milligrams of caffeine and 100 milligrams of alpha GPC, designed to have you operating at peak efficiency. Pay attention, I'm about to give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to use strike gum. Step 1, put a piece in your mouth and start chewing. Step 2, there is no step 2, that's all you gotta do. Gone are the days of costly energy drinks, pre-workout powders, and coffee. Not only that, but the refreshing and long-lasting mint flavor will keep your breath fresh. Strike Gum is veteran-owned and operated, made in the USA, and was founded by fellow content creator Paul from Combat Veteran Reacts. If you want to support us as well as another veteran content creator, take your workouts to the next level and sharpen your mind with Strike Gum by going to the link in our description or pinned comment below. Thank you to Strike Gum for sponsoring today's video. MARSOC stands for Marine Forces Special Operations Command. It's a good thing they dropped the F in the acronym, otherwise they would be known as MARFSOC. Doesn't have the same ring to it. As we said a few short moments ago, MARSOC is the Marine Corps' only special operations unit. This is very unique for a military branch, because everyone else has multiple special operations units, besides the Space Force, who has none. Yet. The Marine Corps might have special operations capable units, such as Marine Recon, but they do not fall under the purview of SOCOM like a bona fide Spec Ops unit does. Semantics aside, Marine Raiders are officially known as Critical Skills Operators and Special Operations Officers. The main difference being that CSOs are enlisted and the SUs are commissioned officers. They can be distinguished from other Marines by the USMC Raider dagger they wear on their uniforms, which is also jokingly called the Stripper chicken by some. Marine Raiders are trained up to perform a wide range of special operations. However, in a nutshell, MARSOC has eight main missions. Direct action, which consists of conducting short strikes and small-scale offensive actions to cease, destroy, capture, recover, or inflict damage in hostile or denied areas. Special reconnaissance, which is acquiring information about the capabilities, intentions, and activities of an enemy not normally found in conventional forces. Counterterrorism, which sounds like its name, they prevent, deter, and respond to terrorism. Foreign internal defense, which is providing training and other assistance to foreign governments and their 
militaries to enable them to provide for their own national security, security force assistance, which is supporting the security forces of allied foreign governments to achieve operational objectives the U.S. shares, counterinsurgency, which is conducting military, paramilitary, political, economic, psychological, and civic operations to defeat insurgent strongholds, support to combating weapons of mass destruction, where they provide expertise, material, and teams to support combatant commanders locating, tagging, and tracking WMDs, and unconventional warfare, which is supporting resistance movement or insurgency which may support conventional military operations. But out of all of those, generally speaking, MARSOC's bread and butter is mainly direct action and foreign internal defense. To the special operations aficionado, this sounds very similar to the US Army Green Berets mission, and you'd be correct. In fact, the operating elements of MARSOC are modeled after Special Forces ODAs, which are the 12-man operating element of the Green Berets. Starting from the top down, the Marine Raider Regiment is made up of a headquarters company and three Marine Raider battalions. Each Marine Raider battalion consists of four Marine Special Operations companies, and each company consists of four 14-man Marine Special Operations teams. MSOTs are the operating elements that we were just talking about moments ago. An MSOT can specialize in one of four areas, mountain teams, dive teams, jump teams, and mobility teams. Mountain teams know how to dominate mountainous terrain. From survival to infiltration, they can do cliff assaults, rock climbing, and can operate vehicles in the environment. Pretty much anything to facilitate mission success. Dive teams are all-round amphibious teams. Not only do they receive combatant diving training, but they also work with various small boats. If the goal is to get there by the water, that's what the dive team specializes in. The jump teams are utilized when inserting into a mission by means of air is the best or only way to get there. And lastly, the mobility teams specialize in utilizing vehicles over a variety of different terrains. Each MSOT is organized into three elements, a headquarters and two identical tactical squads. The HQ element consists of a special operations officer team leader, team chief, operations senior NCO, and a communications senior NCO. Each tactical element consists of an elements leader, three critical skills operators, and a Navy special amphibious reconnaissance corpsman. Yes, you heard correctly, there is someone from the Navy who operates with the Marine Raiders. Since the Marine Corps does not have any organic medical personnel, they pull Navy corpsmen wherever they go. Although not a raider, Navy Sarks are Special Operations Independent Duty corpsmen who received the requisite training to operate alongside the raiders. But there's more to MARSOC than its operators. In fact, they have built an entire support infrastructure around the MSOTs that better enable them for mission success. The two overarching bodies of support personnel that make MARSOC as good as it is, is through Special Operations capability specialists, and combat service support marines. Both SOCs and CSS personnel typically do a 3-5 to five year tour at MARSOC and then return to a conventional Marine Corps unit. In a nutshell, SOCs are enablers that receive in-depth training in their specialized field such as signals intelligence, communications, or explosive ordnance disposal, and are further dialed in to operate alongside an MSOT. They go through their own selection process to make sure that the Raiders are getting top-notch support personnel to aid in mission success. Combat service support marines are directly assigned to support billets at the company and battalion levels, and are usually admin personnel. However, they may also receive an appropriate level of soft-related training as required to support their assigned operations. And speaking of training, what does one have to go through to become a Marine Raider? For starters, people just can't up and join the Marines and try out for selection. In fact, there's no guarantee for anyone who joins the Marine Corps to become a Raider. MARSOC is very unique in the special operations world in that they only let active duty Marines who've put in their time in the fleet to apply for selection. If you enjoy our content and want to support the channel, please help us reach our goal of 5,000 Facebook followers. If you don't have a Facebook but still want to support us, please consider contributing to us on Patreon where we have some pretty cool benefits. The links to these will be in the description and pinned comment below or scan the QR codes on screen. Other special operations communities offer contracts to new recruits so they're guaranteed a shot at selection. So in a way, you can say that part of the Marine Raider pipeline is serving as a conventional Marine for a time. Getting into the thick of things, there are two main training courses a Marine must go through to become a critical skills operator. The first obstacle they must overcome is Assessment and Selection, or ANS. ANS is a two-phase course designed to screen physical ability, confidence, situational awareness, and acclimatization. The first 
phase of ANS will require Marines to pass a series of physical fitness tests, conduct fitness-oriented events, and to gain exposure to the units that comprise MARSOC while receiving daily mentorship by instructors who are CSOs. If allowed to continue, they will move on to ANS Phase 2, which is at an undisclosed location held three times a year. All in all, ANS is the true filter of whether MARSOC believes a Marine has what it takes to be trained up as a Marine Raider. Completion of ANS is by no means a guarantee of moving on to the next phase. They use a holistic approach and determine if each individual will be a good fit for the community. After ANS comes the physically and mentally challenging nine-month course known as the Individual Training Course, or ITC for short. ITC is where Marines learn the foundation of what it is to be a critical skills operator. ITC is split into four training blocks. Basic skills, small unit tactics, close quarters battle, and irregular warfare. The basic skills phase trains and evaluates students in the basic skill sets required of all special operators, such as navigation, patrolling, SEER, TCCC, mission planning, fire support training, and communications. The small unit tactics phase builds upon the foundation of the first phase training in small boat and scout swimmer operations, crew served weapons, demolitions, photography, and information collection and reporting. The close quarters battle phase trains in rifle and pistol combat marksmanship, and then Marines will move on to then learn the tactics, techniques, and procedures needed to serve as a member of an MSOT during assault operations. And finally, during the irregular warfare phase, Marines will receive instruction on irregular warfare operations. Who would have guessed? ITC culminates with what is known as Operation Derna Bridge. Here, Marines will use all of the skills mastered throughout the course while training, advising, and operating with a partner nation or a regular force. Upon successful completion of ITC, a newly minted critical skills operator will join a Marine Raider battalion and integrate into an MSOT. Marine Raiders go through a lot to be where they're at. And even when they're done with their initial pipeline, they are always training and refining their skills so they can be the best operators possible. From SEER, Combatant Dive School, Free Fall, Sniper School, Language Training, Breacher Course, and Multi-Domain Reconnaissance and Surveillance Courses, there's a buffet of training courses available to Marine Raiders. They can even attend some of these same specialty schools that their SOX counterparts go to to create a redundancy in the MSOT. Marine Raiders are cool, but do you know how how they compare against reconnaissance marines? Many people don't really know the difference between Recon versus MARSOC. Lucky for you, we've done a video that lays out what separates these two elite communities in the Marine Corps. Scan the QR code on screen, or go to the link in the description below, along with our social media accounts. Well, that is the down and dirty of MARSOC. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching. Do you even want to be here? A special thank you to all of our supporters and our Patreon and YouTube membership. If you'd like to be featured in our videos, consider joining and go check out the links in our description below. Your contribution is greatly appreciated and will help us create more great content. All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.